Hello and welcome, this is Cheryl. I'm so thankful you stopped by today. In this video, I'm gonna play around with my Stemptember um, Tim Holtz set. I just received it recently and haven't played with it. I also just received the watercolor pencils. I only have set one. I figured I'd get one set and play around with them. So in this video, I'm gonna play around with those watercolor pencils for the first time. I'm just gonna do a background with some of the snowflake stamps from the Stamp Timber set. And I'm going to compare the watercolor pencils with Distress Reinkers for watercoloring a background. That's how I've been doing watercolor mainly for the last several years. So I just figured I would do a side-by-side -side comparison with similar colors. Not all of them are the exact same colors, but they're mostly the same. So the first thing I'm doing is embossing the snowflakes on the watercolor paper with silver embossing paper. You definitely want to use watercolor paper or even mixed media paper, something that can handle some water. You don't want to do this on regular cardstock. Regular cardstock is not meant for water techniques and it'll just buckle and the paints won't act the same way as they do on watercolor paper. On watercolor paper, they tend to float on the surface a little bit more and they don't necessarily react with the paper. The paper does curve a little bit sometimes with the water, but that's to be expected with pretty much any paper and water. So I have my image stamped with Versamark and the silver powder on top of it. I am just using my heat tool to melt the embossing powder. You definitely need a heat tool for this. A blow dryer will not work. A blow dryer will just dry the ink and blow the powder off. A heat tool just emits heat, so it melts the powder exactly where it is. I'm doing this to two different pieces of watercolor paper. Um, and I'm also taking the stencil that came with this Stamp Timber set and using some gel medium and just randomly putting some snowflakes around those embossed snowflakes. I'm not using really any rhyme or reason, just little bits here and there. I'm not necessarily covering the entire page with it. So I've got both pieces of watercolor paper done exactly the same way. And the first one I'm going to play around with the watercolor pencils. And on the first reaction, I actually wasn't expecting the pencils themselves to be as hard as they were. I kind of thought they were going to be a little bit softer. So I don't get as much ink down or pencil down onto the watercolor paper as I thought I was going to. Now, I don't know if after using them for a while and using them with moisture, if that changes, but I was kind of surprised at how little ink went down. So I'm using a water brush here to blend out the ink and the color is a lot lighter because not very much went on the paper than I thought. And I also um, was surprised to get some almost scratches in the watercolor paper from the pencils and I never actually really got rid of them. I keep trying to work the paper throughout this video, but I never actually really got rid of those um, kind of scratch marks, the pencil lines. So keep in mind for that if you're playing with them, that um, direct to paper, you may get some pencil lines that'll be hard to get rid of. Now, because I have the gel medium on here with the little snowflakes, this paper between that and the embossed snowflakes, the paper is rather bumpy. So it's not very smooth to be laying down these crayons either. At some point, I'll try just laying them down on just some smooth watercolor paper and just see if there's any difference. I'm using four of the bluey, purpley tones that are in this set. I'm just trying to create a snowy background for my snowflakes. And then I'm using a water brush to blend it out. I decided to go with a water brush or watercolor brush um, after using my other water brush that has the water in the handle because this just gives you more water and helps it flow a little bit easier. At this point, I decided to just try to take some ink right off of the pencil with my water brush and you can see right away that I get a lot more color on that brush than I do when I'm going directly to the paper with it. So definitely if you're doing a background with these pencils, a better technique would be using your brush directly on the pencil to get the color. Definitely want to make sure to wash your brush in between each of the colors unless you want them blended. Um, I like to blend my colors on the paper and not necessarily on the watercolor pencil. Now as I said before I'm using the Tim Holtz Stamp Timber set. Now this is a set that is brought out in collaboration between Tim Holtz and 
Simon Says Stamp, and it's a limited edition thing, so it's not actually available anymore. But this would technique would work with any stencil or stamp that you chose. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be this particular one only. Creating a watercolor background would work with so many different stamps. Now this particular video, I'm only doing a watercolor background. In my next one, I'll use the same stamp set and I'll use the image from that and use the um, watercolor pencils to paint in the image. And I end up liking that particular um, technique a little bit more. And mainly because with the background, like I said before, I never really got rid of the pencil marks and I kept trying. You can see we keep working it over and over again, and that's because I'm trying to get rid of the initial um, scratches or pencil marks or whatever that I had. So I also wanted to add a little bit of shimmer to this background. So I'm taking some Perfect Pearls with a fan brush, and I'm just dusting it over my wet watercolor paint, and then I'm gonna use a brush to work it in just to get a little bit of shimmer to that background. And I definitely found that using a brush that had a lot more water for this particular background made it a lot easier. So now I'm taking a wide one inch brush and I'm just going over the whole thing um, again in an attempt to smooth out and get rid of those pencil lines, but they never actually go. So I'm going to go and move on to the background where I use some distress reinkers for um, my background. And you can see right away, I get a lot more paint. This is also, um, the way that I normally do it so I'm a lot more comfortable with this. What I like about the reinkers is you're using a tool that has a different purpose. It's the purpose of the reinkers is to reink the ink pads but I always love when you have more uses for the tools that you have. So I'm using similar colors. The first the watercolor pencils that I had were Villainous Potion, Salty Ocean, Speckled Egg and Cracked Pistachio. Um, in my reinkers, I don't have Villainous Potion, but I used Seedless Preserves, then I did Salty Ocean, um, and then I think, it, yeah, Cracked Pistachio was next. I didn't even do a substitute for the Speckled Egg, just because it's such a light color. I figured you probably wouldn't see it or miss it, but you can see with the reinkers how I get a much quicker background um, because those inks are already fluid. I'm already able to add my perfect pearls to the background. So I'm dusting them over the same way I did the first one with a fan brush. I find using a fan brush, you get finer, <clears throat> basically a finer dusting. There are a few clumps there, which is why I take my brush afterwards and I go over that and remove some of those clumps. If you've never used reinkers for watercoloring before, the palette that I have them in is from Ranger. You can use it for the reinkers, you can use it for alcohol inks, you can really use it for a palette for whatever you want. Um, I have mine, my reinkers all in there and I have them labeled in the bottom right. There's a tiny little label that I have the color name as well as um, I watercolored that particular color over top of it so I would know exactly what the shade was. Um, the thing about them though with the reinkers is the reinkers never dry. So you definitely have to store them horizontally. You cannot tilt these up. Otherwise those reinkers would just run and you'd end up having an inky mess. So keep that in mind with using the reinkers with them is they don't dry in the plastic. So they do need to be stored horizontally. If you use them with alcohol inks, they do dry on the plastic. So you can store them however you wish, but just something to keep in mind. I have a place that is just a kind of a little nook that's perfect for them. They never get moved, um, so it's not an issue with my storage, but you may, for some people, it may be an issue. So as you can see, I've finished the background with the reinkers. I'm going back to the one with the watercolor pencils and trying to re rework it some more. It's had a chance to dry a little bit and those pencil marks are still there, so I'm trying to um, add more ink to it as well as trying to get rid of those marks. And spoiler alert, I actually never do. So something to keep in mind for your own project. So you can see right there, those streaks and the marks, I never do get rid of them. So I'm taking some Villainous Potion, uh, the ink pad, and I'm just inking the edges of my pieces of cardstock. I want to kind of frame that scene, the winter scene in. So I'm using more ink where I have the purple and less where I have the blue around the edges. I wanna frame it, but I also don't wanna cover up the blue and I want to have kind of an uneven inked edge. I don't want it to be even all the way around for this particular 
project. I am inking my background now that I did the watercolor pencils with, but I actually don't create a card with it. I end up creating the card with the Just Dress Reinker one, just because it was a background that I liked a lot better. Um, and I didn't really want to waste a card base for a, um, a front that I didn't really like. I may go back and rework this a little bit, but I just wanted to see, wanted you to see the finished product before going over. So now I'm taking a baby wipe and I'm just wiping over top of the embossed snowflakes. Sometimes when you ink, you kind of cover that up a little bit. So by taking a baby wipe or a paper towel, that um, will take that ink right back off of there and that embossing powder will start, will start to shine again. So I've got some different mattes here. I'm using a dark silver for my first mat so that it kind of brings out the silver in the snowflakes. I'm creating a five by seven card. The watercolor piece that I did was four by six. So rather than cut that down, I decided to just create a larger card and have a little bit more mats to them. But really it could have been cut down for a smaller card. I like to put an acrylic block on my card as my layers dry. And sometimes I'll take a um, jar with some glass beads in there to use that to weigh it down. So there's my finished card. There's the watercolor pencil background that I didn't use. Thank you so much for joining me.